So yes people, welcome back to another video here on the JNM Football Channel. So today I'm going to be doing a full analysis video on Kevin De Bruyne. Now as we all know, Kevin De Bruyne is one of the world's best midfielders. He's one of the main reasons Manchester City are so strong and is also one of, if not the best, Belgian player right now. What makes him such a good and important player? Let's jump into the video and find out. So I've spent around the last hour, maybe two hours, going through clips, trying to find his best bits, basically, and things that make him such an important player to both City and Belgium. So I've taken down a few notes, and I've tried to talk. Or I've tried to find things that aren't so obvious. So obviously he's got his technical ability, weak foot skill, stuff like that, but they're all quite obvious to to us football fans. I've tried to pick up a few areas and points that aren't so obvious and things that we can all learn from and improve our game on. So number one is just his awareness and then obviously having the ability to pick out his teammates. So he has great awareness, he's always aware of his teammates making runs, he's always aware of where the spaces are and where the opponents are. Now see here you can see he picks up the, he picks up the ball in the opponent's half, looks up and simply pulls off and he makes it look so easy, basically a whole like width of a pitch switch to the left back left wing. And he makes it look so easy, so simple, and it's such a perfect pass, perfect weight, and easy for the, for the teammate to take, take a touch. Same here, switch play. He just um, switching the play here for fun, basically. Like, he makes it look so simple, looks up, sees Carl Walker or the left back, and just pings it. Now here, you can see he picks up the ball in between like Southampton's centre back, or like back four and centre mid. And all he does is he's on the half turn, he knows that the whole... Southampton back four has like shifted over so there's a massive space on the right wing for I think it's Mares. So so he knows all he has to do is is just turn and just whip a ball basically anywhere on the right um, Right side of the pitch with the with the right amount of speed on the ball So Mares can then get the ball take a touch and attack And obviously here you can see he did it with great technique with the outside of his right right foot now this is probably one of my favorite clips that I saw of Kevin De Bruyne. Obviously, he's scanned before uh, or prior to this, but we just didn't see in this clip. But he like he had to know that there was space on the right side of the field and that his teammate is in such a positive position. So he's obviously scanned before, and as the ball's dropping down from the sky, basically, he just stuck out his right foot and pinged it into that space for the right back or right wing to then attack on. This is definitely one of my favourite um, clips I saw of Kevin De Bruyne because it's such a positive touch. And obviously you have to have great technical skill to be able to pull that off. Now here again, Phil Foden making a run in behind and then Kevin De Bruyne just finding it. And like the thing is like with these passes, he's not having to find just one person. He's just having to find that box of area, that square of area. So then like players like Phil Foden, Mares, Aguero can then run onto and attack. Now here you can see him just making a um, positive run behind the left back and then he's got two options in the box. He looks up, sees Sterling stays behind and it's just an easy finish and a great ball. He's obviously looked up to see where the attackers are. Normally in these sort of situations when there's two attackers, one goes, one stays. And then obviously in this um, in this situation, Sterling stayed on the, on the around the penalty um, spot area and just got a simple finish. Now, my second point that I wrote down is his one-on-ones and how he takes on players at almost any opportunity he gets. So, especially when he's in the final third or at least the opponent's half, he loves taking on players. And he's not one of them fancy players who does, like, loads of skills and stepovers. Normally, it's just a simple body feint or just a touch to one side. And because he's quite built physically, he can hold off players and get past them without a big struggle. So, here you can see he's facing probably one of the world's best defensive midfielders, Kante, and he gets past him. Not easily, but he does get past him because he's quite physically strong and he's able to hold off players. Um, here, Dortmund goes past one and he's gone. It's that he's like, and then like, there's no fancy skills, fancy tricks or flicks. There's one touch, maybe a body feint, and he's gone. Here again against Spurs. There's one touch around the player and he's gone. He can hold them off. He can get past them comfortably with a body feint or a little tiny like fake shot, fake pass. And that's all it really takes him is to get um, to get past players. And because of his ability to get past players so easily, obviously here you can see two defenders like standing off him because they're scared that, that he's going to um, try and get past them. And because they've given him a tiny bit of space, he's then able to pull off the outside of boot cross 
straight onto a teammate's head and it ends up in a goal. So because because of his abil ability to go past plays so easily, players have to back off a bit, which then allows him to have that space to then pull off that amazing pass, cross, or or even a shot. Now even here in this um, play, he's he's in his own box and he's still so calm to just flicker over the player and then play a pass into Sterling, I believe it is, with his left foot or for half volley. So the amount of talent and technical skill this guy has is unreal. Here again, you can see him going past players, head up, and then looking for that pass. Now he, he is also a very direct player, but he does know when to hold it back and slow and slow down the game. Here you can see against Arsenal, he's got like two or three players around him. So he pulls it back, slows it down, and just makes sure he keeps the ball, wins a foul, anything like that. My next point that I wrote down is how much of a dangerous player he is in the final third. In the final third, he's such a dangerous player, rather getting assists or even getting goals. Like, I don't think there's many players more dangerous than him running against your defence or in the final third. You've got Neymar, I would say, Lewandowski, Harry Kane and Kevin De Bruyne. Like, they're in the top five. He's one of the players you want in the final third on the ball, getting assists, getting good crosses or even finishing off and scoring himself. And there's so many clips that I can show you where he's getting assists or scoring. So I'm, I'm just going to run a few now so you can see the examples. Now number four I put down was his decision making. So there's not many times that you see Kevin De Bruyne making the wrong decision, playing the wrong pass or losing the ball. Whenever he gets the ball, he normally picks out a teammate, goes past players, wins a foul, wins anything for his team. Like it's very, it's very rare for Kevin De Bruyne to have the ball and for nothing to come out of it. Here you can see he's running at plays direct and then plays in Sterling. Now this next clip is one of the best passes I've ever seen in my life. Like the just the, not the ability, because like if you pause it here, you like, literally, what you think he can do is maybe pass this to the left back or left wing, whoever it is, or Lukaku can drop into this circle of space and he can play a ball there. But like, not many players are going to see that, that like, pass in between the t the right back and the centre back and then play with the right, right amount of pace and weight so the striker then can get, can get onto the ball. So if you like, pause it here at this screen, like, what do you see? I would say less than 5% of players are going to say this arrow in between the defence and play it perfectly into the um, striker. And on top of all of that, he does it with the outside of his right boot. And the weight of the pass is like unreal, which is a shame they couldn't score for this because that would have been such a good goal. Like that pass d um, deserved a much better finish, 100%. Here you can see he's got the ball on the right wing and he's obviously heard a shout or he's seen Cole Walker make it, make, making the over lap run or the overlapping run so he's just so it's an easy decision to make but it's one that works a lot so he's obviously just wait, waited for the run from Cole Walker to, cr to create that space and he comes in and ends up in a shot being blocked it's just these small decisions like this one that can create you enough space to get in a shot across or anything just to make your team get into a dangerous position this play could fit into a lot of the points that I wrote down so this goes into awareness final third and decision making so obviously he's holding off a defender and then he's still got the ability to look up be aware and see his teammates making runs off the ball which in and he plays in Aguero so just having the like all of these points even in one place of so being aware being dangerous in the final third having the ability to play these passes in tough situations and obviously making the right decisions this is also um a great clip to look at because you can see there's a space between the the back three four and the goalie and obviously having an experienced striker like, like Aguero you know he's going to attack these spaces so all Kevin De Bruyne has to do is just get the ball into that space for then Aguero to be able to attack and obviously finish for a goal. It's a simple pass and finish but you have to have the awareness the ability to play this pass at the right pace for Aguero and obviously Aguero has to time his run off the ball so he doesn't get caught offside all of these things in like seconds you have to make the right decisions and then obviously play the ball. Uh, uh, this ball that he's played here is an absolute joke. It's off one touch. But as you can see, just before he's about to receive the ball, he's scanned into the box. And you can see an attacker 
um, in the box. And then, obviously, as the attacker has seen Kevin De Bruyne scan, that's a trigger point for the striker to, to then make a movement in the box. Trigger point. The attacker's made a run, and then Kevin De Bruyne scans, aims for that area, and ends up with a great goal. So this, I made a post about this on Instagram. It's about scanning, and if the attacker sees the player scan, that's a trigger point, and that's a trigger point for the attacker to make a run. But these trigger points are really important because you have to time them perfectly so you stay on side. And then obviously through Kevin De Bruyne scanning earlier, he, he, he can see where the space is and where the attacker is going to make his run. And then you just add 1 plus 1, 2. Basically, it is that simple. Scan, trigger point, and then obviously he makes the run, he plays the ball. But to be able to play that ball with one touch is like unreal. He's looked up, see see where the space is, and then Jesus has got an... Not not a, not a very easy finish, but quite a simple finish. So all he does is look up, sees the um, sees the space, and knows that their striker is going to attack that space. Trigger points. He makes the run, crosses, chance or a goal. So I think they're all the points that I I've like tried to like um, get across to you to understand like the small stuff that he does so well and um, that are so important to be able to then play well and play well with your teammates. One of the most important things in football is having the ability to scan. And maybe even having eye contact with your strike or your other teammates, which then turns into a trigger point for their movement. Now, this isn't something easy that you can work on, but the more and more you play with your teammates in training, the better understanding you will have on the field. So every time you scan, your, your striker should see that and he, he should use that as a trigger point for his movement. Now, from this video, I hope you can see the smaller details and the smaller reasons why Kevin De Bruyne is such a good player for Man City and Belgium. The small things he does, the scanning, the playing off one, two touches, and obviously having the ability to play off these different types of passes and crosses. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please drop a like. It really helps us grow and it tells us that you're enjoying the content we are putting out. Leave a comment on the player we should do next. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on our future content and I'll see you guys in the next video.